Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, new season of SageMaker Fridays. It's season four already. My name is Julian, and I'm a principal developer advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. Please meet my co-presenter. Hi, everyone. My name is Ségolène, and I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get their ML projects on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. Thank you again for joining us. We will definitely need your expertise. Um, if you're new to SageMaker Fridays, uh, you will quickly find out um, this is a 100% demo, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we just have a very a few uh, intro slides to let you know about this new season, but then we're going to be running code and diving into, uh, into problems. If you have questions, uh, please ask all your questions. Uh, we have moderators who are ready to answer everything. So just don't be shy. Ask anything that you'd like to know. And make sure you learn as much as possible. Okay. Uh, so here's the uh, here's the agenda for this new season. Um, it's actually in three parts. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, uh, the first four episodes that focus on, uh, we'd say, the data science mm -hmm. part of the uh, of machine learning, where we uh, prepare data train models, explain models, etc. And then we'll have uh, four more episodes on ops in general and uh, automation, a strong focus on automation. Uh, and we'll probably revisit uh, some of those early examples and add automation to them. And finally, we have four episodes where we look at AutoML, uh, so trying to automatically build models, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, quite a lot of episodes ahead of us and I uh, hope you find them interesting all the way to October 22nd. Uh, so what are we going to talk about today? So um, today we are going to work on a music recommendation problem. Okay. We will focus on the uh, data science and machine learning angle. Mm -hmm. We are going to cover uh, data preparation deployment, uh, training, sorry, deployment, prediction, and explainability. Okay, yeah, so let's look at the, let's yeah. look at the pipeline and don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll show you the, the URL again if you didn't catch it the first time around. So this is the end-to-end -end workflow exactly. we're covering. And it's a really a good opportunity to learn about um, many of SageMaker's capabilities, right? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so we'll start from a data set, we'll, uh, Get to that in a second. And uh, we will use SageMaker Data Wrangler to process it mm -hmm. and basically run feature engineering. And then we're going to ingest the, the engineered features into SageMaker Feature Store. And next, uh, we're going to use those features um, to create a data set. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll actually use Amazon Athena to query the feature store and retrieve data. So that's really a really cool technique. Um, and, and then, of course, we're going to um, use that data set to train a model, and we're going to use XJBoost. And I have a question on that. <laughs> um, and we're also going to use SageMaker Debugger cool. to, um, during training to uh, capture the model state. Uh, and particularly, we're going to use that data for explainability mm. and feature importance. Okay, so two really important things. And, and we'll stop there for this episode um, because there's so much more we want to talk about, but we'll talk about the rest, mostly uh, automation, the model registry, model monitor, you know, all those ops concerns okay. in, uh, in a September episode. Okay, so for now, data prep, feature store, data science, yeah. training, um, and uh, explainability, mm -hmm and uh, feature importance, okay? So quite a lot of stuff already to, to go through, okay? So let's, uh, so that's about as much slides as you're gonna get today. So let's save them for later and start talking about the problem. So music recommendation with XJBoost mm -hmm. is a bit of a surprise to me, right? Because, uh, I, you know, I thought recommendation was a very, very hard problem and that we could only use very fancy deep learning models. Uh, and here we're using XGBoost. So, okay, fair enough. Uh, but how did we frame the problem so that it can be actually learned by XGBoost? 
So uh, we are framing the problem today as a regression problem. So um, because we are going to see that in details uh, later, but each tract has a number of features such uh -huh. as energy, speechness, tempo, gear, and so on. Okay. And we can actually frame the problem as a regression problem instead of uh, using a more uh, advanced uh, deep learning techniques. So we're trying to predict the a numerical rating exactly. yes mm -hmm. uh, from one to five uh, so okay that's a regression problem. that's a regression that's a yeah. regression problem but if we look at the uh, if we look at the, the data set um, we can see um, so that's the the tracks, the tracks uh, yeah. CSV file so as you said length energy uh, um, speechiness you know how much speech is is in uh, is in the that track and all these are values between zero and one mm -hmm. okay zero means no speech one means it would just be spoken text basically uh, same for you know how instrumental is the track uh how is there a live audience in the track the tempo and the genre and of course i'm going to complain you know yeah i know because yeah we're five <laughs> minutes into the episode so it's time for me to complain there is no heavy metal or hard rock or anything remotely similar. Oh, yes. uh, but I guess, you know, I don't need machine learning to tell me what I like. So there you go. Heavy, me <laughs> heavy metal and nothing else, right? Heavy metal and nothing else. <laughs> um, so let's uh, not discuss my, uh, my musical taste, but okay, these are the tracks and these are the ratings. Okay, so obviously we have a user ID and a track ID that matches the track ID in the other file. Uh, the session ID, uh, the the uh, location of that uh, song in that session, and then of course the rating. Um, so fine, uh, but these are all very you know individual reviews. Mm -hmm. So uh, assuming I was in this data set and assuming I had rated let's say two hundred tracks, how would you know what I like? I'm gonna. I might aggregate uh, this feature. And for instance, and, uh, and after build my recommendation system on top of that. Okay, so you would look at, uh, let's say, uh, for for a given user ID. Yeah. Uh, you would look at all all the ratings for user eleven o five eight, right? Uh, and uh, look at all the tracks that they exactly. like best. So I guess the five star. Exactly the five star. And find all the five star ratings for this user. And then go back here. Here and to understand better. Okay, and say, yeah, okay, <laughs> that that like. <laughs> okay, that person likes very, <laughs> very energetic tracks and very uh, up tempo tracks. Compute some aggregated stats on the five. Yeah. yeah, I guess the five star reviews are, are a good okay, good indicator. So we'll need to do that, right? Because it, it's not it's not in the initial data set. So that it's somewhere in our data prep uh, data prep workflow. Okay, I think that's uh, that's easier to explain. And then, yeah, we these become new features. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That these become new features that we can that we can inject. So how many uh, how many tracks? How many? How, how big is this data set, by the way? I think it's uh, quite a big one because at the, the data set is based on the last FM uh, million song uh, data set okay. with uh, additional processing. Mm -hmm. And the data set we are going to work on today is based on 140,000 more or less different songs and tracks with for 258 users, if I remember well. Okay. So quite Okay, pretty. pretty. And how, yeah, I know, how many ratings do we have? Oh, if you remember what, 700? So okay. Oh, yeah. So okay, reasonably, reasonably large. Yeah. Okay. Bigger. And probably yeah, lots of uh, lots of ratings for each individual mm -hmm. user. So, so we should be able to do a, to do an okay job. Okay. So this is the data again, just quickly. You know, the tracks with the the, the properties, and the track ID that is referenced in the ratings, and the ratings have the user ID and the rating itself. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Um. So, should we look at data prep now? I think so. Okay, because there's probably a bit to do here, and but most importantly, we need to compute those uh, user preferences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So let's start looking at this, and here we're using SageMaker Data Wrangler. Okay, so SageMaker Data Wrangler is um, the the data prep um, capability in SageMaker. 
and uh, and you can visually um, so you can import your data sets which we've already done and then of course you can uh, create uh, you can add transforms so we have some existing transforms we can take a quick look okay so you see a sample of your data set here and then you have a long list you have hundreds of uh, of different transforms that you can apply mm -hmm. right and so here we've applied uh, just a few things, uh, very, uh, very simple ones. Uh, and uh, for tracks, so we, uh, um, we actually insert um, a new column, uh, which is called event time with a timestamp. Mm -hmm. And we can see this here. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's in there. I think it's the custom formula. No, no it's the custom, custom price. Price, price, price. Yes. Okay. All right, so here you can see we add a new column with a timestamp. Um, and we'll need this for feature store. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that later. And we can see there's a, there's a custom formula that computes uh, a new column as well called Dancibility, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I don't like. So uh, I should rename this one Headbangability. <laughs> I don't know. And I would use a different formula, but again. <laughs> don't be grumpy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I can be grumpy, come on. <laughs> I'm supposed it. to be grumpy. Um, but anyway, we do a few things. Uh, we want out encode uh, categorical features. So here we want out encode the genre, et cetera. Okay. So for, for the tracks, uh, for the tracks, that's about it. And for, what do we do for ratings? Let's take a look. It looks like we're not doing a lot. Um, probably also inserting that timestamp i would think okay again this is for feature store we'll see why mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah data types just typing the columns okay so not not a lot of work um i thought you can export as well right yes That's and we're going to yeah we're going to actually uh, show you that okay um so for the the two tables so to speak here we, we do actually very limited work but then we join them mm -hmm. Okay, so it's uh, something you can absolutely do in, in Data Wrangler. And so we join them on the, on the track ID, track ID, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that now for each review, we also have the track features, on the same row, because we need to compute those aggregations. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is what we do here. Uh, so uh, we actually apply this PySpark transform. Right, and yeah, it's a little hard to see here, um, but let me maybe just, I can just copy paste, show you this in a notebook. And basically what we do here is, yeah, we just, so we take all those numerical uh, mm -hmm. columns, <clears throat> Uh, as well as the one out encoded uh, genres, mm -hmm. and we compute averages. averages. Okay. You, you could probably think of you know more fancy techniques, but okay, for here, for this use case, average is fine. Mm -hmm. So we just take all the five star reviews and we average all those values, and then that becomes the user preferences. Okay, so that's uh, that's the one of the output for the the, the workflow we have. Okay, and so here again, in the interest of time, because it's not so interesting to watch me click, we've done this, but if you want to go and add more transforms, you know, you can just go and do that. Okay, so just uh, just go back to uh, whatever uh, uh, data source you want to tweak and, and you can go and add more, mm -hmm. okay? So now that we have this, um, how, do we, how do we run it? Okay. What, what are our options? How do we actually apply those, uh, those transforms? We need to go to export. We need to go to export, <laughs> absolutely. So we could say, um, so let's say, okay, we want to export all steps. So we could select the steps that we want to actually apply. Click here. And then we get plenty of options. So we can save to uh, S3, which really means run a SageMaker processing job. So SageMaker processing <laughs> is, uh, is one of my favorite categories. <laughs> it's so easy to work with. And it lets you run all sorts of batch jobs, mm -hmm. right? So this could be data prep, they could be model evaluation, they could be literally anything. All the batch stuff you need to do in ML uh, is really, you know, uh, 
uh, works very well with the Sage microprocessing. So here we run a job uh, on, on managed infrastructure, just one, one line of code to do this or a couple of lines of code, and you get your process data in S3 or storage service. Okay, so that's one way. Uh, another way is Python code. So you just want the code that runs that feature engineering workflow because you want to put it in your repository mm -hmm. and, and, and you, know, you don't want to necessarily run it on AWS. You just want the transform code. So you can do that, fine. Um, then you can actually create a notebook that exports that data to feature store. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to do here. Uh, and we'll see why this is interesting. And then uh, and then pipeline, okay, uh, which is for automation, and we'll cover that in a different episode. Okay, so let's take a look at um, let's That's yeah. So so this is the uh, this is the flow file, the the workflow uh, file in JSON format, and we'll come to that in a second. Uh, but now let's move on to okay, how do we run this thing? Okay, so here. Uh, we're going to do it three times, basically, because we want to process tracks, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we want to process ratings, mm -hmm. or, and we want to build the joined uh, user preferences. Okay. So we actually have three notebooks, so we're going to go, and they do exactly the, uh, the same thing over for different uh, sources, but we're going to look, let's say, at uh, tracks, okay? And the workflow is always the same. So again, what we're trying to do here is we have this workflow that we built and we want to programmatically run it over the data source itself uh, and, and grab the transform data mm -hmm. and ingest it into SageMaker okay. Feature Store. Okay? okay, so three notebooks to do this, but let's look at cracks, okay? So first of all, uh, yeah, we have some dependencies. Um, so we need to uh, have a schema for mm -hmm. that uh, the feature store, and which is really just the name of name of the features and the types. Okay, super super simple. So that really matches what we've uh, what we've built. Okay, and these are called feature definitions. Okay, uh, and next we're going to create uh, our uh, Feature group. So a feature group is basically uh, it's um, it's an object that stores features coming from a data source. Okay. So here it could be it's a CSV file, but it could be a database table. Okay. So it's good practice to have one feature group for each data source. Mm -hmm. Right, makes uh, makes it simple to manage. Okay. Um, so there's a bit of a setup code here, <laughs> uh, but basically here we create <laughs> the feature group. Okay, we give it a name, pass the the schema. Okay, and then we just uh, create it. Okay, fine, super nice, super simple. Two very important columns, mm -hmm. the record ID and the event time. So record ID is the unique identifier for each row. Mm -hmm. So here, obviously, we're going to use the track ID and we'll use the review ID for, for the other things, etc. So that's it's the it's the primary key right in mm -hmm. if for if you want a sql analogy it's it's the <laughs> it's the primary key for that data source okay so if you have that in the data set fine if you don't have one uh, you need to create one mm -hmm. here we we can just use uh, so we what we had and the even time which is a timestamp so the times yeah. this is the reason why we created it yes and we created it because um, and, and we already have a timestamp for the review itself or the rating, mm -hmm. but here it's the timestamp for the feature, the engineered feature. Mm -hmm. When did we create those new features? Okay. Because over time we could have different versions okay. of, the, uh, of our feature engineering scripts. So we can manage thanks to this timestamp. Okay. Yeah, so we could say, okay, uh, you know, we have this new feature engineering process and fine, we apply it and we, we push those new features to the feature store but they have a more recent timestamp. So we can navigate okay. uh, the, the different versions of the features over time, over time right? okay. which is pretty cool. Okay, um, so we create it, we wait, it, we wait for it to get, uh, to get totally created, and, and now we can actually run our workflow and push data. Okay. Okay? So, uh, Again, we're, do, we're doing this with SageMaker processing, so very simple. It's a batch job. It has inputs and outputs. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, pretty cool. So, <laughs> inputs, unsurprisingly, are the tracks. CSV. Okay, the CSV yeah. file, the location of the of the of the CSV file in S3. And the output. And the location of ratings in S3. Okay. okay so the, the the batch job using a, a, a built-in container will read those files and apply the workflow that we created. Okay, so how do we do that? That's the output. Okay. So the output is, uh, actually, if you look back at the workflow, uh, like I said, we have three outputs. We have one output here for tracks, process tracks. We have one output here for process ratings, and we have one output here for uh, user preferences. Okay, so here in this case, we are looking at uh, tracks, I believe. So we want to catch this. So notes. Okay. okay. So you, you're literally saying to uh, to Cedric Processing, run this workflow and uh, run this workflow until here, and save me that output to okay. S3. Okay. So how do you do that? You give uh, the sorry, it's here. You give the identifier of the node. Okay. Okay. In that graph. And, and that's what you find in that JSON file, okay? So if I look for, let's look for this, should be enough, should be unique enough. Okay, okay. I can see, all right, this, this is, okay, this is the input, okay. So this is the actual node, right? So this is the actual um, uh, node that, produces the data that I'm okay? So that's how you can actually pick, and this is a, a very cool feature, I think. You can mm -hmm. actually, you can have a, a, a one workflow like this, and you can pick process data literally after each step, after each step right? Mm -hmm. So that's why here we have one workflow, um, and which we run three times, but we just grab the output at different stages, okay? And then, of course, we decide to push that stuff automatically to the store. Okay. And we pass the future group name. Okay? Perfect. So that's pretty much all there is to it. So we actually upload the flow file to S3 because that's where SageMaker Processing will read it. And then we just run our uh, and we just run our processing job. Okay. So we pick the instance uh, size and instance uh, count that we want to run uh, this uh, job on. And uh, and there we go. And then we just fire it up. Okay, and it runs, and it saves the data. Okay. okay, and we do this three times, right? We do this for user preferences. We do this for ratings. Rating and tracks. Okay, so now that we've uh, processed our data, mm -hmm. okay, now that it's uh, fully ready, we can go and train our model. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and the purpose here is obviously to train the model itself, but also we're going to use SageMaker Debugger. Um, to compute and store um, feature importance okay. information and explainability information with uh, SHA. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see how this works. So we have some, uh, some setup code. And the first step, of course, is to build the data set because what we've just done is we've created three feature groups. Uh -huh. Okay. One for ratings, one for tracks, one with the user preferences, the aggregated. Stats. Okay, so we we want to uh, we want to train from that. So that data right now is uh, stored in what we call offline feature store. So it's basically S3. Okay, right? uh, and we can go and query the data directly in S3 with Amazon Amazon Athena. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is one of our uh, 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 data databases, data services. And, uh, and the really cool thing is we can query in place. Okay, So we don't have to create a database. The data is in S3, we can query directly. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Okay, We're going to do that. Uh, and the reason why we can do that is because when we create feature groups, by default, uh, we automatically create an Athena table. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe, maybe I can show you that. I and guess. does it so. Yes, okay. uh, you, you can disable it if you if you'd like, okay. but uh, you know why. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at Athena. Uh, okay, so we can see we have a database called SageMaker Feature Store, and we can see um, we can see here, yeah, SageMaker Feature Store, and we can see we have tables, right? And okay, we have some different things here, but um, we see the actually the three tables for ratings. Okay, right? so we have ratings. We can easily preview them. Let's go and do that. Cool. Okay. So again, uh, what's running here is uh, it's a, a SQL query on the feature group data that's stored in S3. Okay. okay. And I didn't create anything else. It's uh, so it's you know I didn't set up anything that you, you didn't see. Okay. We created the feature group and that automatically created sure. a table and Athena knows okay. how to map that schema to the data S3. Okay, so we have ratings. Uh, we have. So this is the reason why we need to define the schema as well before. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that helps. That sounds. And okay, now we see, we see the tracks, right? Mm -hmm. The process tracks. Okay. And this is the new thing we created during. Mm -hmm. uh, Pre-processing, we see the the five star uh, aggregated preferences. Okay, so for example, we see that user eleven o six three likes reasonably high energy songs and a very you know doesn't really like uh, acoustic <laughs> songs. Um, you know they really don't like either instrumental songs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and we can see the genre and the favorite genre is rap. Oh my god. Well, it, it, it is actually rap. Oh, okay, see? <laughs> it's the demo effect. Okay, <laughs> but then again, you know, it's fine. Uh, you can listen to what you like. Uh, and so these are really, you know, these are really important because they, this is what we're going to, uh, this is what we're going to train on because okay. Now you know for each uh, for each track uh, for each rating. Okay, if we take a rating, and if we join those features uh -huh. to the rating, uh -huh. then we can see. Okay, so this this track with these properties was rated two mm -hmm. two one five by a user with those. Preferences. Okay. okay, so now you have all those features on the same row. So you can see, okay, if that uh, uh, if that person loves rap, then okay, uh, it probably makes sense if they you know if they give low ratings to I don't know classical or jazz. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so that's that's the that's the story here. And this is the reason why we talk about a regression problem. Yes, because now we have all those features and we try to predict the uh, we try to predict the, the rating and so. Okay, so that these are all the features we're going to put together. Okay, so that's what we need to do now, and, and you know, building the building the data set. Okay, and so this is where we're going to. Um, so we're selecting uh, five hundred thousand tracks. Okay, so it's a limit that we set, and we're actually merging. Uh, we're actually merging those uh, those ratings with the, the two other tables okay so you could you could say well why didn't you run you, you could actually run one big sql query that does does the join okay here uh you know we have simple queries and we use pandas to merge mm -mm. but if you want you know if you're more familiar with panda fine panda's fine but uh, you, you could also run uh, you know SQL. you could run that monster, <laughs> monster SQL SQL. <laughs> query that actually queries the three <laughs> tables and joins it, it, you know you can do the same thing okay so that's really what we're doing here okay so we query the three individual tables okay. uh, and then we merge okay but again we could have one single query and join everything okay and so that gives us the data set uh, that, that we just talked about. So we have all the ratings, and then we have uh, the, so in the ratings we have the track ID and the uh, the uh, review ID. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, sorry, the user ID. Okay, we have so in each review we have the track ID and the user ID, and so we join on those two things. So now on each row we have 
the rating, the review information, the user preferences, and the track information. So quite a few columns in there. Uh, actually, we have 30, uh, 37 plus the, the label, the rating itself. Okay. And, uh, and that's the data set. Okay, that's cool. Makes sense. Um, all right, so uh, so yeah, we yeah we split it for training and validation, and then we save it, okay, uh, to two CSV files which we upload to S3 because again that's where SageMaker wants the data mm -hmm. uh, to be stored. Okay, we configure our training inputs, mm -hmm. okay, uh, which we're going to pass to the uh, to the training job, okay. And now, okay, we need to configure the actual training. Okay. So uh, a few things here, um, infrastructure requirements, mm -hmm. okay, and SageMaker is fully managed, so we don't worry too much about that. We just say, hey, go and train on two M5, four Excel instances. Uh, that should be, you know, fine. And if that's too slow, we can add more and, you know, it mm -hmm. should scale. Um, built in, yeah, the uh, built -in the built in algo, so the container, mm -hmm. uh, all, all training activities, uh, and deployment activity for that matter is based on containers. Mm -hmm. So here we use XJBoost, which is built in uh, SageMaker, okay, and we select the, the version that we want. Uh, we prepare some hyperparameters for XJBoost, okay, so regression problem, we use a squared error as mm -hmm. our metric, and we can set uh all the hyperparameters that um, XGBoost uh, supports, okay? And we put everything together using this very important object in the SageMaker SDK called the, the estimator, estimator, okay? So we pass our infrastructure requirements, um, the location of the container for XGBoost, the hyperparameters, and yeah, where to save the model, mm -hmm. okay? So that's typically what you pass. Here, we added a little bit more and we added uh, SageMaker debugger information, and SageMaker debugger will uh, save um, a model state during training, okay? And you can specify the, you know, the save interval number of steps that you, uh, you know, if you want to save every five steps, ten steps, etc. And here we can save um, a different number of collections. So uh, here we decide to save metrics because mm -hmm. we want to plot them, feature Which importance information. Uh, the local or the full chat values for each sample in the uh, in the training set. So we'll have detailed chat values um, and global chat values for the data set. So if you're familiar with chat, you know exactly what we're going to see. If you're not familiar with chat, chat is basically uh, it's a super cool uh, uh, library and, and, and technique that helps us understand how features contribute exactly. to the output prediction. Exactly. And how each value, uh, in individual value predicts. Predict. Okay, so if you have a, yeah. a high feature value, does it influence the prediction, uh, you know, uh, up or down? Mm. And if you have a low value, does it influence it up or down? And we can cool, build all, all those cool plots that you can see in a minute. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so SageMaker debugger also lets you uh, configure rules that will check for uh, unwanted conditions mm -hmm. and uh, in your job. And they will uh, they will actually uh, you know they will actually stop the job uh, and then send an alert if if the job doesn't behave the way you want. So here just just for the sake of it you know we say hey if That's loss important. is not decreasing then stop the job because we might be overfitting we might be spending mm -hmm. our time and money uh, inefficiently <laughs> so no reason to continue. Okay. All right and then we just train. Okay uh, and this is really a one liner. Here, uh, so we call fit, uh, passing the location of the training set, the location of the validation. validation. Okay, um, and this lets you reuse a, a previous model or train a new one. But really, the it's really a one-line operation here. Okay, so it goes and trains. So it fires up the amount of infrastructure that you uh, decided to uh, to I use. It. Uh, it pulls the container, it loads the data, and fires up the training job. Okay, and we can see the training rounds. Um, and once the once the job is complete, the infrastructure is automatically shut down. Uh, this ran for about 20 minutes, and the model is saved in S3. Okay, and from there we could go and deploy, etc. But we'll do this in uh, in, in September in, in another episode. 
where we focus more on ops and automation. Okay. All right, so now we have a trained model and we have all the information that SageMaker Debugger saved automatically in S3. So now we can go and, uh, and load, that, uh, load that data from the, uh, the output path in S3, okay? Um, and for example, we can load, uh, so we have utility functions to load the, the collection of, uh, of tensors that we saved and plot them, okay? These are uh, reasonably generic. So for example, we can plot uh, the metrics. Okay, so here our metrics was uh, mean square error. So we have the training value, we have validation value, and we see the job went pretty well, right? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, we didn't train for too long and, you know, so looks like the model learned something. Okay. That's a good news. It's good news. Yeah. <laughs> it's good news. And of course you see also, you see those metrics uh, in the training log, and you see them in uh, in uh, CloudWatch or monitoring service. But it, I think it's good it's, to it's also, good, yeah, you know, you don't have to jump and you've got to your different video consoles. Yeah, you can see everything. Okay, and you can plot feature importance. Okay, um, so pretty uh, pretty useful. Um, and we can plot sharp values. Okay, over time. Okay, so we see, uh, yeah, the, we can see the, you know, there are three features here that are a little more important than the other one. So, you know, you can go and investigate and, <laughs> and, and decide if, uh, um, well, it's not feature important, sorry, it's, it's shared value. So you can see, value. yeah, the, these have a, a, a positive outcome, on, a positive impact on the outcome, mm -hmm. and these tend to have a, a, negative, a, 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 a negative impact. And uh, yeah, so we can see again, we can see um, global values, etc. Okay, and we can see uh, we can see local uh, individual values. Okay, mm -hmm. so here we see uh, sharp values for each. Um, each row in mm -hmm. the each instance in the in the training set. Okay, it's super important for the explainability of your ML model. Yes, and uh, and so the 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 blue and red scale uh, is about the feature value. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see. So let's try and see. For example, this one here. Uh, yeah, this one here is very clear as well. So here we see that uh so we see strong, strong red on one side strong, strong blue, blue on the other side which tells us that there's a clear difference between feature low values of the feature mm -hmm. and high values of the feature mm -hmm. so here if we see if we see that basically people who love rap right so people who rate who have a lot of rap songs in their five star reviews Okay, um, will actually uh, impact strongly impact and consistently impact the, uh, the the predicted output. Okay, so that means if you if again if you don't like rap, it tends to if you have very few uh, very few five star reviews for rap songs, then it again it has a very clear impact. So I might be wrong, but what this tells me is. Uh, Either you love rap mm -hmm. and and probably don't like anything else, mm -hmm. right? Um, because again, this has such a strong impact. So if you love rap, then yeah, you you you, you this this is really what your thing, right? And and if you if you don't like rap, then again, uh, um, this you will tend to really you know score rap very very low. So it's a very polarized view. Mm -hmm. right? That's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say. Um, which uh, which we might see, which we don't really see with Latin. For example, Latin is is a little bit more balanced, right? So it, you could like Latin music and some other stuff, but but yeah, just to be fair to rap fans, I guess you know the, if you had a metal thing, it'd be even more you know polarized. So that's fine. 
I didn't hear that. I, I, I'll, I'll remove this. I will edit this bit. We didn't hear this. Okay. So anyway, uh, you can you can look into shops in great in, into shop great detail. It's it's a really really important. Yeah, it's a it's a really important uh, mechanism in understanding you know what the impact is and uh, and yeah, this one here is very interesting as well. Blue in the center and red on the extremes, uh, instrumentalness. So yeah, you know, some people probably love instrumental music and uh, or totally dislike instrumental music. I don't know. It's it's worth analyzing those and trying to figure out mm -hmm. you know, what people uh, what what that tells you about music uh, music habits. Okay, well that's I think that's what we wanted to show you today. Uh, again, there's more stuff, but we'll we'll keep that for a future episode. Okay, uh, so we started from CSV files. Mm -hmm. We processed them with flows, okay, uh, that we built in, in Data Wrangler. And, uh, and we saw all the transforms we could apply, and, uh, and we, ran those, uh, we ran those transforms automatically with mm -hmm. the processing. And then we uploaded that process data to S3, uh, and uh, we trained a model on that. And we saw how we could explain and uh, and see feature importance for that model. Okay. So again, let me show you where that uh, repository lives. Okay, really quickly. It's time for the screenshot. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you can go. You can go and grab that. You can absolutely run it yourself. Go over all the code, uh, and um, and tweak it and uh, and make it your own. Okay, uh, and uh, and this is a really interesting example. And again, you know, we'll we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to the 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 downstream task, you know, model registry, etc., and and automation with pipelines and so on. And okay. I think it's a good example of uh, the data scientist uh, yes. daily job. He says, you've got some data, you're going to create some new feature on your data. And after you're going to do like, uh, you want to automate, automate your processing. And after, of course, you train your model and you can yep. after understand, bit, bit, uh, understand it better thanks to a debugger and this kind of... Uh, yeah, and here we make it look very linear, but in real life, for you, yeah. <laughs> uh, you iterate a lot, and, and you, 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 you know, it's a little more uh... stochastic. <laughs> yes, I don't know what that means, but yeah, it probably is very stochastic. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, you know, it's here you see the final project, you mm. know, and uh, but this you can build this iteratively, and and the the good thing I, I think is in SageMaker we have. Hopefully, all the building blocks mm. that you need, right? So mm -hmm. you can you can start processing your data manually, and then, as you saw, it's really easy to automate. Mm -hmm. Once you've clicked in uh, in Data Wrangler and and transform the data the way you like, it's one click away from mm -hmm. you know running that automatically again and again and again. Okay, and and again, once you have your final features, you push them to Feature Store, and and you're one SQL query away from Okay, here's my data set, and you know, and you can you don't have to run all that processing again. You've done that. Okay, you've had you fully processed that reasonably large data set, and you can just select subsets that you mm. want for a particular task. Okay, and then you know, training uh, and, and training is uh, is is actually the easy bit. You know, it's uh, it's just a few lines of code, creating the estimator and, and you know, calling fit. And, Thank you. Yeah, SageMaker business as usual. Thank you. I, I, you know, I had managed not to say it, but there we go. Okay. So again, uh, this is the notebook. Uh, go and grab it, uh, run it, um, and uh, you know, get in touch if you have questions uh, or feedback. We're always interested in that. And uh, and I think we're getting close to the end of this episode. So did I forget anything? No. No. What are we gonna cover next time? Uh, next time. So next time, okay. Next time is I think it's a fraud detection. Fraud detection. Ah, my favorite uh, topic. scenario. Yeah, fraud <laughs> detection is really important as well for uh, yeah, for, for everybody. Sure. Yeah. So we have a we have a nice uh, fraud detection example, and I think this one includes uh, bias mitigation, bias analysis, and bias mitigation. Well, yeah. So we'll talk about those uh, really cool techniques, and we'll we'll talk about data prep again and we'll revisit some of those topics and, and add more okay 
Perfect. So I think that's it for today. Uh, Sego, thank you so much. Thank you. Always a pleasure. And thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope you, uh, you learned a few things. And uh, see you next week for another episode. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye.